Hey, Steve. Besides, obviously, just providing another score on the floor, when Draymond is aggressive like that on offense, what does that do for your team? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think there's there's a stat somewhere. Raymond's got it for sure. You know, when he scores a certain number of points, we usually win. Um, you know, he's uh, when when he's aggressive like that, looking to attack, it it definitely adds another dimension to our team. And I I loved his approach uh, to the game tonight. He was aggressive right from the start. Picked up a foul on the first play, and you know, didn't didn't care. Like made no bones about it. He's like, I'm I'm coming, I'm coming. And and um, I thought he was one of the keys for sure. He stayed with Peyton, obviously in the starting lineup, but he's, I think he's plus 25 in this game. What does he do for you, specifically against the Lakers, that's kind of triggering some of this? Well, I mean, he's a, Gary's a game changer, and we knew that last year. I mean, we don't win the championship without Gary. And uh, so to get him back um, has completely changed our defense. And, um, you know, against uh, against these guys, he's got the ability to to get into their guards. They have great guard play with, with D'Lo and Reeves and, and uh, Schroeder, obviously Walker last game, uh, played so well. So Gary gives us, uh, uh, you know, someone who can get underneath uh, their ball handlers and, and at least uh, make them, you know, have to work. And, um, and then offensively, he's so unique with his speed and um, his ability to finish around the rim. So it's just uh, we're, we're a different team, you know, when, now, that, now that he's back with us. Steve. Go ahead. Go ahead, CJ. Hey, Steve, kind of circling back to Kendra's note on aggression, what does an ag aggressive Andrew Wiggins do for you guys offensively? Yeah, this was the best game Wiggs has played since he's been back, you know, over, I guess, three three weeks or so now. Um, he uh, Just his, the way he attacked, the way he got to the rim, um, that adds another dimension to our attack. I, I thought the last couple games uh, – in LA, you know, we we just did we didn't get to the line a ton. Um, we uh, we settled for a lot of a lot of stuff, and I, I thought Wiggs did a good job of, um, of really being aggressive. Steve, uh, back here. Steph has 22 assists the last two games. Obviously, hasn't shot well from three by his standards. But how essential has that been? His sort of playmaking, and how much is that a function of the way the Lakers are defending you guys? Uh, it, yeah, it's um, it's a little of both. I mean, you know, I think Steph at this point in his career, he he really feels, you know, what needs to to um, to happen during a game, what's required of him, and uh, you saw it in Game Seven against Sacramento, where he just he knew he had to score, took thirty eight shots. Uh, in this series, um, you know, the, the Lakers' defense is. Um, is really good. They're great at the rim. We've got to get the ball moving. We've got to move their defense around, and Steph understands that. And uh, I don't know what his assist to, to turnover ratio is in this series, but uh, it's, it's, it's pretty impressive. Hey, Steve. Um, you saw Draymond say on his pod, all we have to do is win one game, and then the entire tenor of the series changes, and the right. pressure is back on the Lakers. Obviously, every t single time you guys have gone to the playoffs, basically, you know, since the big three has been together, you guys have reached the finals. Is there always a belief, like no matter what situation you guys are in, just because of that, that you guys can get through at all? Yeah, yeah. I think um, there, there's always that belief uh, based on you know the the success these guys have had and uh, the confidence they've built up together the continuity so um, you know I think our guys were were disappointed we couldn't wrap up game four after playing pretty well for most of the game uh, but now we get another crack uh, to to go down there and and uh, you know try to even up the series so um, the guys will always have have belief that's just that's who they are Steve, there was a sequence in the fourth quarter where Andrew was picking up LeBron almost full court, not the ball away. It wound up with Draymond blocking Anthony Davis. Just kind of take me through that sequence and what's it like to see their defense lead to offense on the other side? Yeah, well, you know, Wiggs, uh, we, we ask so much of him defensively um, in, in any playoff series. Um, he's going to end up on, you know, the opponent's uh, best wing player. So in this series, that's obviously LeBron and um uh, you know, thank God we've got Wiggs because he, um, you know, he can can play all night. He can pressure up the court. Um, he can he can guard in the half court and 
and um, stay in front of people. And on that particular play, he picked up uh, LeBron really high, and um, and then Draymond was behind the play to help him out. So it's a big sequence. Hey, coach. Clay Thompson had 10 points tonight, 3 of 12 from the field, 2 of 6 from 3, but he's plus 16 on on, on tonight. So can you kind of just t tell me your take, your perspective on how Clay played tonight? Do you think it was a really good Clay performance or do you think you you need more for game 6? No, I mean it's, it's you know the, the thing with Clay is um, he's an incredible two-way basketball player and that's what wins in the playoffs. Um, shooting comes and goes even even for the best. Um, but if you can defend uh, which Clay obviously can do uh, then you can uh, help a team win a playoff game and and uh, in Clay's case uh, a lot of playoff games and um, so the, the the great thing is um, we know um, Clay's due uh, for a good shooting night, but whether whether it comes or not, we we know his defense is going to impact the game, as you said, plus sixteen in thirty seven minutes. So um, he's doing a great job out there. Steve Ad's obviously had a huge impact on the series. You guys end up with fifty points in the paint tonight. Um, pulled him away a little bit. How did you feel about? Handling that impact, and, and are there times when, as great as he is, that that you guys need to be more aggressive at the rim? Seems like there's just a lot of, a lot of playing through. Yeah, I mean he's so good that you you have to try to move him around, and um, you know they did some different things tonight. They started switching more on pick and rolls, um, but um, you know Davis is is a guy that you you've got to find the right balance. You have to uh, respect his presence at the rim, but you also can't shy away from it you know so you got to understand if if you have an angle to uh to attack you got to take it um and if he's there waiting and um you know that's a great time to make a jump stop and you know swing the ball to the other side and um i thought our guys did a, a pretty good job of navigating that tonight you you mentioned the the need to to move them around move him around defensively um also obviously the pick and roll has been an effective strategy in this series they switch to as you mentioned um how do you balance um wanting to move them around with your traditional motion stuff with you know obviously uh i guess going heavier pick and roll well that's uh um, that's sort of the the game you know for us in the playoffs is um we we traditionally um play a lot more pick and roll in the playoffs and um we didn't go as as heavy tonight on that as we did in game uh, four, um, but you know it's always a blend. A, a lot of what we do is you know after the pick and roll. So if I mean if Clay, if Steph doesn't have a shot, uh, it's the movement that results uh, from uh, moving the defense around and maybe the ball swings and Clay gets a gets a jumper or Jordan or you know Wiggs. So it's still uh, you know whatever you do, whether it's motion offense or pick and roll you're still just trying to get a reaction and, and draw two defenders and and then move the ball and if our spacing is good and we're making good decisions and um, we can be effective either way steve you guys were obviously one loss away from elimination but with draymond you've said this to me the other night you were saying that when you get when he doesn't play well you guys lose he always comes back tonight did you know did you anticipate this was going to come from him early on i mean did you see it beforehand or did you sense it uh i think um you just expect it in a situation like this um, where you're facing elimination. Draymond is one of the great competitors I've ever been around, so you just expect him to bring it. I didn't, I didn't say anything to him. He, he doesn't need any, any pep talks from me, that's for sure. Um, Steve, to, to follow up with that, um, it, great energy today, and it's, it's been tough to bottle that up and, and, then, and then take that down to L.A., but in, in this case, do you think, well, not do you think, but in your coaching strategy, would you pull Draymond aside and talk about his, you know, how great he did today and just kind of replicate that for game six? I think, um, you know, that's that's what coaching is about. It's not just, uh, you know, drawing up plays or figuring out a, a, the strategy. It's just communication and, um, you know, whatever I feel a player needs to hear, whether it's for me or somebody on our staff, then um, we try to make sure we communicate that. And um, Draymond and I, have we've known each other nine years now, so um, we have a good feel for each other. And, and uh, I think we see the game in a very similar manner. And um, so we talk all the time. This is a 
I say it, I say it a lot. Um, you know, this is a collaboration, and um, a lot of times in film sessions, um, you know, the players will speak up and we'll make a decision based on how they feel, and um, that's how this works. So um, we gotta we gotta make sure we keep keep that connection going. All right. Go ahead. Uh, just speaking of what guys need to hear, what did, what did Jordan Poole need to hear after the last game and sort of how he came back in this one? Uh, I think Jordan, I'm not sure what he needed to hear. I think what, what Jordan knows is that our guys support him. Our guys love him. Um, coaches, teammates, um, he's, uh, he's a great young guy. Everybody loves uh, being around him. He's had a lot of success, and this year has been up and down. And um, so his teammates just want to know, want him to know that um, they're there for him, and uh, that's that's what it's about. I thought he was he was uh, much more aggressive and and under control tonight. No turnovers. He really looked to to score and get get his shot going. He, you know, he he, uh, he looked a lot more like himself tonight, and um, I think all the guys are are happy to see that because we know he's capable of of so much.